I'm going to assume I'm on. See, I, I knew I was on, something else was not. Um, today's gospel text is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 according to the gospel of Mark. It is a story that is found in all four gospels, which shows the importance of this story to um, the early church. So we'll see what that means for us. Let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It is found on page three of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and in this world. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God and Father of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us, for the sake of Jesus our Savior. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. to 
The first lesson for today is from, the, from 2 Kings chapter 4. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. Thus says the Lord. They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of God. Thanks be to God. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. That all people may know of your power, and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The second lesson for today is from the third chapter of Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees before the, Lord, the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. Pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the, Jew of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are, they, <clears throat> what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it, it was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been a couple of weeks since I've seen you, and a couple of weeks ago I was in Detroit with the youth at the ELCA Youth Gathering. 30,000 young people. You can imagine hanging out with high schoolers that food was on our minds a lot. 
seemed we were always looking for a place to eat. And I tried to bring them to places that were unique and uh, stay away from fast food. Sometimes that was not possible, but most of the time it was. And let's just uh, look at a few of the places we eat. That's a theme, by the way, of today's gospel lesson, food. Here we are, well, the very day that our, of our service project, we went to um, the great American Coney dog. I always thought that the Coney dog was invented in New York, Coney Island, right? It was invented in Detroit. And they have the shop that's been there all those years. So we went and had a Coney dog, which they are pretty good. You've got to have it with chili and all the, the chili. Chili and onions, of course. You can't see this very well, but here we are eating at the Bucharest. The Bucharest, that was our, we stopped at our first day. That is the place that has the famous sandwich called the shawarma. It has, it's chopped up spiced chicken with vegetables all wrapped up in a wrap. And uh, the kids loved it. In fact, they wanted to go back and we did go back. Uh, and in fact, it was one of the least expensive places we ate at. The swarma big sandwich only cost five bucks. Oh, they don't look very pleased because it's seven o'clock in the morning, breakfast at the hotel. Breakfast at the hotel was dried out uh, uh, egg McMuffins, so. And here we are, stood on a lot of li lines, just waiting for ice cream. And over here was one morning after breakfast. That Saturday morning af after breakfast, actually, we ate at Tim Horton's, the, the, the place we were going to go, the pot belly, I think it's the pot belly pig, was closed on Saturday morning of all times. And here we are. This was our first day. All those orange t-shirts, 10,000 people. They had to move each day to their service project where they would work for a few hours and they also provided lunch. So again, food. They had trouble that first day moving all 10,000 of us and they only got about 7,000 moved with lunch. And they just said, we, we just can't get enough uh, box lunches together to get the rest of you going. You better go and find something else to do. So that's when we went to the great American Coney Dog place. And, uh, and everyone was disappointed. Do you want our, our service project was to be, we were to go and clean houses so they could be boarded up. Detroit has lost 900,000 people. So a lot of empty homes. And I suppose they wanted to make sure there's nothing dead or rotting in those homes before they build, board them up. Our theme, Jesus feeding the 5,000. It was something that humanity was supposed to learn from day one in creation, that God feeds us. If you ever plant a garden, and you see how the abundance comes out of that garden. If it's 
halfway well cared for. God feeds us through creation. In our text, by the way, we see Jesus' three emphases in his ministry. Education was a big emphasis. Health care was a big emphasis. If you notice that all the people were following Jesus because they saw the signs he did with the sick. A sign in the Gospel of John is a miracle. So education, health care, and now we also see this emphasis of food security, food for the people. Notice in the text, Jesus says to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And the text says, Jesus knew what he was going to do. He wanted to see what Philip was do, would do. And Philip's reaction is probably what our reaction would be. How can six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little? Just think of the logistical nightmare it was to get box lunches to 10,000 people. Here, 5,000 people, and it's a, a, a place where food, there's a scarcity of food. So Philip's answer, where would we get that food, and where would we get the money to pay for it? One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? What's Jesus going to teach here? God feeds us, even with what we think is a very little. Our reaction is a little bit like the four men in a rowboat, leak on one end, and the, those on the other end are sitting there smiling. Aren't you glad the leak is on their end? It's not my responsibility, right? Or this one, Maxine. Well, aren't you just the most adorable black hole of need? What people want, we go, oh, it's too hard. It's going to cost me something. The youth gathering, it was interesting. We had one of the speakers, her name was uh, Emily Scott. She's the founding pastor of St. Lydia's. It's called a dinner church. What they do is they have a potluck every Sunday. And they meet around tables, and they have their worship service, and they have Holy Communion, and then they eat. She thought in a poor area what they should do is have a church that emphasizes feeding people. I thought it was a neat idea. And I hate to, hate to be skeptical that it's not going to go too far, but who knows, maybe. God feeds us in creation. Uh, Martin Luther was one who was always mystified at the hiddenness of God. And it seems to be a theme in our culture, that God seems to be too hidden. If God really exists, why doesn't God make God's self known to us in more dramatic fashions? But Luther says, in creation, God feeds us. But it's one of those things we call the masks of God. Because just because our garden is growing and overflowing with abundance for us, we think, oh, I know how that happened. I planted a seed. I watered a plant. I kept watering it and watering it and watering it, and it grew. It's a mask of God. God leaves it us, up to us to do two things. Figure out how through creation he feeds us and figure out how we, with this abundance, 
can feed not only ourselves, but one another. God feeds us. Um, oh, in the bread church, the interesting thing is that Emily Scott said, scientists have told us that there's enough food to feed everyone in the world. Every year we provide, the, the earth provides an abundance of food that can feed everyone. The two things that prevent that from happening, again, it's a logistical nightmare, and the second thing is waste. We in the United States throw away 40% of our food. 40%. And if we could just figure out those two things, waste and distribution, we could feed the world. That text from Second Kings that Rick read, where the man from Baal Shalashah says to Elisha, brings to Elijah the first fruits. He has just had the harvest, and he brings the first fruits. He brings in his uh, barley loaves, a poor man's, a poor man's meal, barley loaves, little loaves. We think they would be large, but they're little loaves. And uh, he, he brought in 20, along with other grain that hadn't been uh, taken out of, the, out of the head of grain yet. And Elijah says, put that before our guests. And his servant says, how can I do that? That would be an embarrassment. That would be an insult to our guests. That wouldn't be enough to feed them. And Elijah says, what God says is enough. It will be enough. And we will have plenty left over. And sure enough, those servants put out that food, everyone ate, and there was food left over. What it comes down to is this whole question, I have so little, can it make a difference? But remember, this is a text about God taking our little and doing something great with it. Taking our little. A pastor by the name of Ryan Mills, an ELCA pastor, tells of uh, volunteering at a homeless shelter for women and children in Fort Worth, Texas. And he said it, it was a ragtag rag organization where they, they got along on the very minimal uh, amount and they were highly dependent upon volunteers bringing in food. So they, that night, brought in food. It, it was just one big room, cots along the edge of the room where the women slept with their children. And he said the night, one of the nights he was volunteering, the adults, the adult volunteers were making sandwiches. And he said they were just bologna sandwiches, not great sandwiches. And all of a sudden, a ruckus happens. He said a young girl, eight or nine years old, comes walking in with balloons and party hats, she was going to have her birthday party with all the families and children. She walked in and brought all of her friends. And all of her friends were told, don't bring me a gift, bring a covered dish. We're going to the homeless shelter and have my birthday party there. So her party hats, balloons, singing, noise. All the children played with the other children. And there was a feast. He said, we were standing there with our meager sandwiches, and they brought in a feast. Our little 
which we have much in this, uh, there's a, a tremendous abundance in our society, our little, when put in the hands of God, becomes great, becomes a great feast. This is all a model for us to remember, a model of that great banquet, that heavenly feast that we will feast upon in heaven, a little heaven on earth. So God feeds us in creation. It's one of the masks of God. Does God want something from us? Yeah. Our little. He really doesn't want our money. He wants our trust. He doesn't really want our finances. He wants our faith. He doesn't really want our things. God wants you. Trust. He takes our little and does a lot. Amen. In hope we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, stupefied, died, and was buried. And in the third day he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the living and the dead. 
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit and fed by the Word, we come together as the people of God to pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. God, our provider, awaken hunger for your truth. Awaken this hunger in us and in the Church around the world so all are fed with your love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We grieve as we remember those who died in mass killings this week and pray for those who were wounded. Guide the police as they attempt to protect and to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. In every place of hunger, Bring food, O God. In every place of poverty, bring abundance. In every place of terror, bring comfort and security. May all people know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge and be filled with all your fullness, O God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are near to those who call upon you. With your generous touch, heal those for whom we pray especially Karen Gullett, Roy Freeberg, Bill Howard, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Scotty Inman, Samantha Linnell, and Kay Shonona, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, John Reynolds, Wayne Sproul, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? You gather up the lives of all your children, receive into your fullness those who have died. Comfort those who are left behind in grieving, especially the family and friends of Anne Held and of Kendall Bills. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen this congregation in its service to Crossline and community poverty programs. Open our eyes to your abundance when we see only scarcity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, loving God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. up your heart we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give our thanks and it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
say he, the body of Christ. Take, drink, the blood of Christ. May this body and blood preserve you in true faith and through life everlasting. eat the body of Christ, 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 the body of Christ. body of Christ. Take eat the 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 body of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take 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 eat the body of Christ. Christ. Take eat the body of 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 Christ. Body of Christ. Take eat the 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 body of Christ. Did we forget anybody? Not that I know of.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements. David would like to make an announcement. My name's Dave Seward. I am a fellow bus tripper to Detroit, and I felt at one time that I was coerced into the whole thing because, well, that's what I felt. It doesn't matter. But I'm, I, you know, I'm thinking of this Detroit no, no, trip. Just a second, David. Oh, wait. Oh, it, it, it was pathetic having David along in this trip. Talk to everybody. Where's David? Oh, he's back there talking to somebody. And here's what was really just embarrassing, embarrassed the whole group. They won't allow any noise-making instruments in Ford Field, Dome Stadium, going to have an event. Don't want people annoying everyone, blowing these horns. David became very attached to this horn, and he begged the woman, Please let me keep it. Please. And we're all going, oh, we don't know him. Please. Anyway. That is our trophy. It had, was signed by everybody on the bus, everybody I could meet, people begging for us and that kind of stuff. All the kids signed it. But thinking about this Detroit trip, it was, it was pretty amazing. The one thing that hit me right between the eyes was how great our kids were. It's amazing. We had kids jumping on seats. We had kids throwing stuff. We had kids wouldn't listen to all. The, our group was great. There was he and me and 10 kids and 30,000 total. I couldn't believe it. But I have to tell you how proud and I, I don't want to embarrass them. There's two of them here. But, but they're, they were just fantastic because they were so nice. I'll go again. If they weren't, oh, 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 you forget it. But thank you for being so great. It was a good time. Good kids, you are right. Helped to walk them 17 miles the first day. They were really quiet after that. <laughs> no, they're just plain old good kids. Uh, 
Mick and I were in Minnesota this week, as uh, most of you know, for the funeral of her mother, and I do want to thank you all for uh, your display of sympathy. It was quite heartwarming for both Mick and I. I don't have anything else to announce. Please receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that fills our hearts with, that gives us courage and strength, and the presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture you, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.